I played one or two games this year, I think one of them might have been good, and it was probably Ape War. This year, for me at least, was the ultimate, oh, that's cool, anyway, kind of year. There was a few games that caught me more than others, but honestly, maybe that's my problem. My lobotomy did get delayed next year, so... What did I play? Um, oh, okay, I played The Last Clockwinder. This is a cute one. You record your own actions in VR to create these little machines of your duplicates all working together. I played it for 79 minutes. Um, what else? <laughs> my friend Casey gifted me Disco Elysium. I played it for 73 minutes and it was traumatic. Played some DayZ, replayed Half-Life to try and feel alive again. Chamber, or else I will shove the sample up your ass. And stop fucking with the microwave. I picked up Saints and Sinners Chapter 2. This one was kind of a disappointment for me. I feel like there's a joke here for how it feels dead, walking around the only two new towns they added. But I'll um, I'll leave that for you guys in the comments. You know, funniest joke gets a Ginsters pasty. Yeah. I also played this small indie game called Fortnite. Fortnite. They got this guy, which uh, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we got company. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time for the real games. VTOL VR is for planes, what train simulator is for trains, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I've never been one for these types of uber-realistic simulator games, but VR adds a whole new dimension to it, and the creators of VTOL definitely understood the assignment when making this. It's not the deepest game in the world, but it accomplishes what it sets out to do, and it made me feel sick, so good job. Okay, my... I think I probably should I'm gonna pull up next to you. If you fly straight, I'll pull up next to you. I don't think I should have uh, took off of this thing. My plane appears to want to spin out. Yeah, it's because you you don't have a right wing, bro. <laughs> Your right wing is... Ah, oh, I gone. see, I see. <laughs> Mirror's Edge in VR is one of... <laughs> oh, fucking Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge in VR is one of those amazing ideas that I'm surprised nobody else has really tried to get in on it yet. Stride VR tries its hand at doing just that, and it's pretty damn good. I think the one thing holding this game back is it's basically just a sandboxy minigame type thing. There's no story, no real motivation for doing anything, it's just for fun. Which I mean it is, so, you know, good job. Oh, I remember fondly the days my grandfather used to sit me on his lap in front of the fireplace and we would crack on the Xbox 360 gaming console and play Call of Duty Zombies. I was obsessed with this game back in the day, seriously. I got to the top 400 in Shadows of Evil, which, sure, might not sound like much, but fuck you, I was so proud of that shit. It's a shame I've kind of become disillusioned with the more recent zombie games, but man, the World at War to Black Ops 3 era zombies really just is the perfect team-based zombie shooter. In Counter-Strike 2, you spend money to open cases, but there's also this neat little shooting mini-game where you can go into several maps and get shouted at by English boys pretending to be Russians. It makes me very angry and it makes me want to die. I played quite a bit of the Sea of Thieves earlier this year. People keep trying to make these stupid ass pirate games, but nobody will ever beat this one in my opinion. It's a bit grindy, and you might ask yourself, why am I even doing this? But then you get in a fight with other players, or make some cool ass discoveries, and it all becomes so clear. That is until your friend shoots you out of a cannon directly into the gullet of a kraken. <sighs> Pavlov, look, Pavlov made this channel, it made this community, and it made me extremely depressed. <laughs> In retrospect, U29 really messed this game up. I might make a whole other video on that in the future, but I am still rooting for this game. I hope the devs can crawl out of this hole they found themselves in, but also, give me my money for giving you the Jared Plush idea, you sick fucks. Flame, I surrender. I surrender. You don't have to fight. We don't have to fight. <laughs> Ask yourself. What if Team Fortress 2 was good? Oh, so many of you are not going to like that one. <laughs> we have three alts that we can use in the next fight. Why did you do that to me? I was 
so scary. Mordow, Mordow, Mordhow. Mordow. It's an almost perfect game. It's mechanically simple enough to just pick up, have fun, and have a jam, but it's complicated enough that there will almost definitely be one motherfucker with a thousand hours who dominates the entire lobby in 1v1s. Timing that perfect parry, utilizing all the different perks and loadouts, it is entirely possible to professionally sink way too many hours in this game. But also there's people that do this. Certainly! Good day! Yes, yes, please come here to answer. Bad move! You know, it's not every day I get to face a worthy opponent. Try and tell me this is a bad game. Just try and fucking say that with a straight face. Remember that time when I said COD Zombies was the best team-based zombie shooter? I was actually a lying bitch back then. Valve have never released a bad game, except that one time they did. I love the campaigns and workshop content for this game, but I really grinded out the versus mode this year. It's just so damn fun, playing as the infected and as a survivor, either struggling against someone who has mastered every infected in the game, or watching as a tank does this. What is he doing? <laughs> what is Faceless doing? Faceless. Get your head in the game. Look, maybe it's the recency bias talking, but fuck you. This game is fun, man. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. I hope the single dev that made this game does continue to support it, as I think more moons and more content in general would really keep this game going. I think my one complaint is that since I tend to be very stupid, I haven't actually made it that far yet and gotten all the cool stuff you can buy. It'd be nice if maybe there was some sort of easier mode to keep some equipment on your ship after you die or get fired, I don't know. Basically what I'm saying is, when I run straight into the dark without a flashlight, knowing full well my teammates have all been killed, it doesn't mean I'm bad, the game just sucks. The first few videos on this channel were about how terrible Cyberpunk 2077 was. This is why it's important to not hop on bandwagons before critically thinking about something. Sure, the game was quite fucky at launch, but man, playing it again this year completely changes the experience for me. Cyberpunk is an incredible story with rich, real characters who you genuinely start to care for and understand. It's beautiful, mechanically deep, and it helped me realise I was trans. What did you expect? Headstone, flag, and flowers. Yeah, I, I don't know. A marker, something, anything. So, you're saying you saved my life. <laughs> Thank you. Of all the heads I could have popped up in, I'm hella glad it was yours. But you fought. And never stop fighting. Unpopular opinion alert, guys. Red Dead Redemption 2 is good. Here's the real shocker though, I didn't play much of the single player for Red Dead this year. 90% of my time was spent in the online mode. Is it abandoned? Yeah. Has Rockstar been pushing microtransactions like they did with GTA Online? Sure. Is it riddled with hackers? Yeah. But God, riding around with your friends, creating your posse, doing bounties, missions, hunting, camping, drinking, treasure hunting. This world is beautiful and I really, really enjoyed the time I spent with my friends and solo. I've sadly fallen off of the game at this point, having maxed out most of the professions, but for about 200 hours I really, really enjoyed this game. If they did more actual updates, it'd be one of the best things Rockstar have created. So how did you know she was gonna betray us? What'd she say? It was in her eyes, in the way she was leading us. But you said you knew Spanish. Senor, por favor. Damn, that's good. I missed. Blade and Sorcery is the gold standard for video game development. Even if you've not played VR, you've seen gameplay of Blade and Sorcery. 
Even when the game was in its early stages, clips were going viral purely because of the insanely fun nature of the sandbox. Insanely fun nature of the sandbox. Modding certainly helped, and the devs welcomed modding with open arms, even adding an in-game mod manager in their last update. Speaking of updates, the Blade and Sorcery devs have adopted the practice of under-promise and over-deliver. This is the perfect way to go about development in my opinion. We are constantly teased with little updates and even glitches that have occurred during development, and then when the update finally drops, it's even better than what was initially promised. I've spent 300 hours in this game and I still feel like I've got so much to do. Especially with the official 1.0 update on the horizon, you best believe I'm going to play the hell out of this game in 2024. Which is actually why 8 War is my game of the year in 2023.